Unfortunately, this has happened again. The builder on our new build, two million pound development, the first one we're doing has gone bust. It means this is not for the first time. So in this video, I wanna to explain to you what's happened and what we're doing going forward. If you're watching my videos for the first time, my name is Saj Hussain and on this channel I share my 15 years of property investing experience with you with three videos a week to ultimately help you get further faster in your property investing journey. This is our first new build site that we've done. It's been a fantastic project, but it's not been without its challenges. This is the second time a builder, a contractor that's building the site has gone bust on us. Now we've pretty much finished, we're nearly there, but we've got a few challenges that we need to deal with. It's a beautiful day, it looks fantastic, but it's absolutely freezing. So let's get on inside and let me tell you a little bit more about what's happening. So let me give you some background in terms of what's happened here. So this particular site, what we're in now was the original farmhouse on this site. When we acquired this site, this is the only building here, and we had planning permission to build three new five bedroom detached houses, extend this one, make those one a much nicer house. So effectively end up with four luxury premium houses with a total GDV about 2.1, 2.2 million. Fantastic project, nice profit margin. We got started on it right at the beginning once we'd acquired the site. And the builder that we used, the building contractor, it was a small contractor, gave us a really good price. But unfortunately, they ran into some difficulty in a few months. They dug out the trenches, ready to start. But all the planning conditions hadn't been discharged and they were waiting around for them to be discharged so they could actually start working. But they had other issues going on in their business and ultimately what it meant is they went bust. We, by that point, we'd paid them about £25,000 to really dig us a hole. And that's all it was. The reality is we weren't really out of pocket because our quantity surveyor who's measuring and monitoring the project and in terms of what work is done, we're paying based on the work that's happened. It wasn't a huge problem. It caused us some delays because we had to find a new contractor to start. So the contractor that was working on this site recently, that was the one that we appointed to actually finish the project and get it done. It was a design and build contract. And so what that means is the complete responsibility ships over to the builder to finish the whole project and really hand us the keys back at the end of the project. That's where I like it, nice and easy. I mean, somebody's taking care of all the headache and dealing with that. Now, they had a decent sized contractor and they had a number of other big jobs they're doing as well. In fact, we're probably their smallest client on this particular site because they're doing some other huge projects. But as many people have faced, you know, during this time, during this year, some challenges within the marketplace, they've had pressures within their business, which we sensed a little bit just before Christmas, that there were some issues going on. And then unfortunately we discovered that they'd gone bust. They've gone bump on us. And as had before Christmas, we started to get a little bit of an inkling that things weren't right because the works on this side had slowed right down and we were falling behind a little bit. Even though most of the work is done, the, the, the three new houses that we have, one has already been sold and somebody's living in that. In fact, they had Christmas there in the, in the new house. And the two that are 95% done, they just need a little bit of tidying, but finishing off and they're pretty much done. This house is the one that was the furthest behind. It probably needs about two months work on it, six weeks, two months to actually finish it off. But with the builder now having got bust on, it means that actually now we're back to square one pretty much where we've got to now find new contractors to start again and finish the site. For many years, I've been really excited about trying to get into a new build sector and building out the ground because I think it's a great way of making profit from property rather than the traditional way we've been doing where we're buying property, adding value that way. It, I mean, this is a competitive sector as well, but less competitive than what pretty much everybody else is doing. So, you know, when this site came along, it was amazing. It was great profit in it. We thought this is going to be a straightforward project. A lot of the work was done up front in terms of negotiation, getting it started. And then you just hand it over. As I said, it's a design and build contract. You don't really get involved that much on a day-to-day -day basis. Everything specced up and agreed in advance. And when the first builder went bust, it was such a... Uh, you know, for me, it was a, a real kick in the teeth thinking, well, this is going to be hard, maybe not as easy as I thought it was going to be, but it was not such a big problem. You know, we weren't that advanced to the project, finding a new contract, getting started, hey, presto, we're moving forward again. And then roll the clock forward so many months, now we're in a position here where the builder's gone bust again. Now, if I'm being honest, when I heard the news of what's happened, you know, it was just such a... It was such a depressing day for me thinking, well, is this gonna happen again and again? Is this what this is about? Is this what new builds are about? But the reality is when I take a step back and just reflect on it, and you know, we're absolutely blessed in terms of position that we're in. We're actually not out of pocket. 
we've got uh, the, our quantity surveyor which monitors the work we've only paid for what's been done so what hasn't been finished we actually haven't paid for so the funds are allocated it simply means we've got to put our contractors now on and just finish the job off it's not really as bad as it sounds but the first you know when i first found out I was really feeling down at that time on that particular day but you know taking a step back now i know we can get this finished this is not any more difficult than any of the other projects that we ordinarily do although we've paid the builder for the works that we've done and that's all good however their subcontractors the people they employ to do some of the works for example like the plumbers electrician unfortunately they haven't actually been paid by the company and as you'd understand they were upset and uh, what we had a bit of an incident where they turned up and started ripping things out of the property so the the radiators and some of the electrics and stuff they started ripping out of this particular property because they hadn't been paid so let me tell you a little bit more about that and what that means If you're enjoying this content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, enable the notification bell as well, so that way YouTube will notify you when we release videos just like this. So as I mentioned earlier on, we paid our bills on site with the contractor, the contractor's pretty much up to date, but unfortunately the contractor hasn't paid his subcontractors and they've been back to site uh, in between whilst all these uh, shenanigans have been going on and they've been on with a team of people really ripping all the stuff back out that they've been putting in that they haven't been paid for. So for example, the radiators have been removed off the wall, the light switches, the sockets, all these things were fitted. But as you can see now, they're all gone on this particular pot, uh, this particular slot, uh, plot even. So what's happened is they've yanked things off the wall, they just cut things off, uh, the switches, the pipes, they've yanked the shower trays out. And all this really, I mean, a lot of this is, has very little use uh, to them, but I can understand that they're upset if they been, haven't been paid for what they've, uh, what they've done or what they've supplied. All in all, it's, it's, the damage is in hundreds of pounds, you know, maybe a couple of thousand pounds at the most. So it's not a massive amount in terms of uh, what's happened. So what we've needed to do is come in secure the site. So we've got our CCTV up now, we've got all the alarms enabled, we've changed all the locks. So the site is more secure now and we're in control of the site. So in terms of next steps, what we need to do now is sort out what we're gonna do, how we're gonna rectify all these problems and how we're gonna move forward. So let's talk about what the solutions are and how we're gonna move forward from here. So here's the thing, it's not all bad news, every cloud has a silver lining. So once I'd finished having a bit of a mope and licked my wounds, we took a step back and looked at it and we thought, right, what's the situation, what does this mean? Well, the real opportunity here for us is now that we're no longer in the contract that we were originally, which is the design and build contract, it means we can change the specification, actually refine these houses the way that we would like to now to make them more attractive and in fact make them even more profitable than initially the project was. So what do I mean by that? Well, when they were building these houses, currently we're in one of the ones that's pretty much finished. It just needs a little bit of a snagging left to do in this one. When we were looking at this and when they were building this house, one of the other ones is one that's already actually been sold. And I was here during the, uh, during the build and I looked at the roof space. The roof space is absolutely enormous on these houses. It spans across the whole house. And remember, these are five bedroom detached houses with an integrated garage. So a huge amount of roof space up there. But actually, you know, during that time when I spotted that, I think we're missing a trick here. We should be using this space. We should be putting a master bedroom up here with the Velux windows with views across the fields. You know, the ones that open up both sides. It'll be stunning, it'll be amazing. 
but at that point we were already in the contract, we'd committed and to make changes at that point would be very difficult and very costly as well, so we just left it. But now that we're out of the contract, I've got straight onto the structural engineer to review the roof space and say, right, what do we need to do to redesign this space and open it up so that we can move the master bedroom up there. And also it meant when I was looking at some of these rooms here, although this is a, a, a premium five bedroom house, a couple of the rooms are quite small. They're not really big rooms, they're kind of small boxy rooms. And two of those rooms we can now knock together, open them up, make them into a bigger bedroom. So we'll have four bedrooms on this floor, a master bedroom on the, uh, on the floor above us in the attic space, with an ensuite, with a dressing room. So it'll be a much more stunning property. It'll cost us a little bit more in terms of modification, but hey, this is an easy time for us to be able to do that now. But what it will mean, it'll make the profit, uh, the property even more profitable than it initially was and on the other project the one we were just on the other site uh, the other house even the one we were just in we're now looking at how we can change the design on that to make it maybe a much more contemporary or modern finish maybe a bit more tech house with a, a lot more gadgets in it as well so that way we've got different style of houses on the same plot will appeal to different people so really i'm very excited about what's happening right now and you know if you're ever in a situation like this where it just feels like everything's just falling in around you it's taking a step back and looking at it and sometimes we're so close we can't see the wood from the trees but by taking a step back or maybe getting somebody else to look at it with you you can see right where's the opportunities from this situation. What else can we do to make it even better than what it was initially? So like I said, every cloud has a silver lining, so look for those opportunities. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again on the next video.